Good morning and welcome to Belmont Baptist Church. This is our first uh, Advent um, day. We're going to have some special music. We have a special tribute to Todd Wiersum and then the pastor will be bringing the message. To open, we're going to start by reading the familiar passage from the book of Luke starting in verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that in this Time when we're not able to physically be together, you have provided uh, the technology so that we can be having these virtual services. We think of everyone in the BBC family. Um, we pray that you will um, be with them, give them a special sense of your presence. Be near to us in these times when we cannot be near to each other, and all of our, our good friends here. Now we pray that you will bless uh, your word as Pastor Kurt brings it to us. And um, we are thankful for the Christmas season when we remember beginning of your acts of redemption uh, in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. We ask it in his name. Amen.
Greetings and thanks for joining us. It's Christmas time. We're starting our Advent Christmas series, and thank you that you could join us. I like nativities and nativity sets. I don't know what your family has. Uh, we appreciate those, and it reminds us of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story many years ago in Kentucky of a young man who uh, got for Christmas something rather special. And the story's like this. The day after Christmas in Kentucky, the pastor saw over his lawn, noticed a young boy uh, in carrying in his wagon the baby Jesus. And he looked at the church and saw the nativity in front of the church and Jesus was gone. And so he went up to that boy and he said, well, what are you doing with this baby Jesus? And I like what the little guy said. I got him and I'm taking him for a ride. And well, why are you doing that, said the pastor. He said, well, about a week ago before Christmas, I prayed to the little Lord Jesus and I told them that if he would bring me a red wagon for Christmas, I would give him a ride around the block. Well, that could be a unique scene. Uh, I just like nativity sets. In fact, we're seeing less and less of them out in our community. And even those that see a nativity set, they know the historical account of the birth of Jesus. But I'm wondering how many really know why Jesus came and to all the reasons that were involved in God's plan of redemption. And that's kind of what we're going to be looking at for the next two or three weeks in this series of why did Jesus come with a little bit more insight and depth to the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming. So today we'll have three, in the next couple of weeks we'll have three each Sunday to give us background. So why did Jesus come? Number one, the scriptures say that he came to fulfill the law. In Matthew chapter 5, just before the Beatitudes, he said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill the law. So we need to think a little bit about that. They had 1,500 years of following Moses and the law. 1,500 years of just the do's and the don'ts and following the law. Now Jesus was coming and everything was going to be shaken up with the new covenant that he promised. So they're wondering, well, what about the last 1,500 years? Jesus is saying that he came to fulfill the law. The law in itself was inadequate. You see a house. If a house and the foundation was built and the, just the foundation and, and the sticks and the studs coming up, now that was the Old Testament. The New Testament now finished it off with grace and the completed God's plan and purpose for each individual and his redemptive plan. It says in Galatians chapter 4, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. So he came to fulfill the law, to give us the, the word fulfill means to complete, to satisfy, to accomplish and finish. What the Old Testament was insufficient and unable to complete through the death, burial, resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus. Freedom, redemption, salvation through Christ was accomplished. And we'll look at that again in, in, a, in some of the points down the road. But he came to fulfill it. And just let me just take a little, little sidestep here. That as we look at redemptive history and Jesus came into the world, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let's personalize that a little bit. And, and for you, he came that you may have life in abundance. We'll look at that in a moment. But he also came to fulfill that which was incomplete. You as a creation, the image of God, were not complete without redemption and the transformation and dwelling of the Spirit. And he fulfills that in us with salvation, but also your purpose and how God will use you. So he is using this to fulfill you as well, let alone his divine purpose in the big picture. The second thing is the scripture says that he came to serve. In Matthew chapter 20, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Very interesting passage of scripture. In fact, that was in a context with a mother who meant very well for her sons, but she actually 
came to the Lord Jesus and asked that they would sit at his right and his left hand in the kingdom. It's kind of a bodacious request to ask, but you know, it's a mother concerned about her sons. And yet Jesus then turns it and says, it's not about position and authority, it's about serving. And he gave that example in his life. A few years ago, Queen Elizabeth uh, visited America. Kind of interesting, I'm watching the Netflix series The Crown and kind of interesting, the king and the queen and uh, royalty, which we're not too used to. She came to America and the reporters delighted in spelling out the logistics involved in her coming. 4,000 pounds of luggage included two outfits for every occasion, a morning outfit, uh, outfit in case somebody died, 40 pints of plasma, a white uh, kid leather toilet seat cover. She brought along with her a hairdresser, two valets, and a host of other attendants. And the brief visit of royalty to a foreign country could cost about $2 million. Now that was a couple years ago and the price probably went up. We have God, Jesus, coming to earth as a royal king, but coming to serve taking on the form of man, incarnation, more incarceration, and, and he came to serve in a humble position. What a difference. And so in his coming, he came, as this passage talks about, to serve and to give his life a ransom. That's an interesting word, ransom. I've been fortunate I haven't had my car impounded, but if you had a car impounded, you go and you pay amount to get it free to redeem it. It's the ransom price that was paid for redeeming your car. Our redemption of salvation came through his life, which we're going to recognize months down the road at the Easter time, the death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thinking about uh, the Lord Jesus when I read the Philippians, this wonderful passage, this kenosis passage, it says, let each one of you Look not unto his own interest, but to the interests of others. Have this mind among you, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was the form of God, did not count an equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient even to the point of death. Therefore God has highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. That's the mindset we as followers of Christ should take upon ourselves, that he came to serve and we come to serve. Interesting, this word serve is not the slave word doulos, this is the deaconos word. This is the word for deacon, to minister, to care for, and to wait on. That's where we get the role of deacon in the church, in, in Acts, the ones that serve the tables. And so that's the word that Jesus used for we to follow in the ransom. It's the price paid for freedom, uh, liberating slaves, captives, and property. He did that for us. He came to serve. As followers of Christ, he uh, raised the bar, but then we are to demonstrate that same perspective and desire of service, even to the point of self-sacrifice, hours before his death, washing the feet of his disciples, going to people, uh, healing, encouraging, proclaiming the truth. So we're to, he came to fulfill the law, he came to serve, and the last one today, he came to uh, preach the word. It says in the scriptures of Mark, he said to them, let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. Now when we look at preaching, probably a lot of different perspectives, but that word means to herald, to proclaim, to, to, uh, to announce something. And of course, in this context, he's talking about uh, Good, the gospel, um, good news, salvation, and, and you're announcing it publicly. 
The wonderful Christmas carol, I've mentioned this before years ago, that was written during, World, during the Civil War by um, Longfellow. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, 1864, during the middle of a dark time, the Civil War. And uh, it was just a dark time and, and everybody was fighting. And he comes out and he hears the bells of the church on Christmas Day. And that's why he wrote this. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, the old familiar carols play, wild and sweet the words repeat, peace on earth, goodwill to men. These bells proclaim, they announce, you can hear at a distance. And the, the next verse down the road he says, let peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead nor doth he sleep, the wrong shall fail, the right prevail. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Christ came to preach, to announce, to, to uh, uh, proclaim to the world salvation. And it is in the midst of darkness, a civil war and conflict and struggle. And that's what he does today. The Lord Jesus, in, the, in his life when he started ministry, to kick off his ministry in Nazareth, where he grew up, went to the synagogue, and you remember in Luke chapter 4, and he got up and he read from the scroll in Isaiah chapter 61, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, proclaim liberty, to proclaim the year of the Lord. It's a quote from Isaiah 61. He's there to proclaim it. So his intent and purpose was to come and to proclaim the good news, and he lived it, and he died, and we as a result have been recipients of this grace, and then that's our privilege and opportunity to proclaim it in our testimonies verbally and in our actions, and especially this time of year as we look forward uh, to celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we conclude this morning, There's a story that uh, I remember hearing a few years ago in New York, in Washington, D.C., with uh, a very famous violinist, uh, Joshua Bell, Grammy Award winning. He had a three and a half million dollar Stradivarius violin. And you'd pay $200 plus a seat to go to the Kennedy Center to see him play. They did an experiment. They put him in regular clothes and put him in a subway to see what people would do. So the Washington Post tapped Mr. Bell to conduct an experiment. They dressed him in humble garb, blue jeans, casual shirt, and ball cap, and they had him perform some of the most difficult compositions possible. The master violinist played for 40 minutes, and during that time, more than 1,100 people passed by. Only seven stopped to listen. The video footage shows that at the conclusion of each piece, there was no applause, no accolades, just the sound of subway trains whistling towards destinations around the city. Reflecting on the experience, Mr. Bell commented, it was a strange feeling that people were um, ignoring me. Put in context the Lord Jesus Christ, it was God's plan, covertly, incognito, to be born as he did, the miraculous conception and birth of Jesus, and it was God's plan to introduce the ministry in a unique way. But like that, people like nativity sets, they may not understand who he is and what he was going to do. And so here we are today kicking off Advent and Christmas in a unique time, the pandemic, loss of loved ones, so many job issues and challenges, we, can, we need to look and see in that manger the Lord Jesus Christ. The announcement to Mary, he was going to rule and reign, and he is the Messiah Jesus Christ. Our privilege for us to recognize the fulfillment of God's plan, to be like Christ and to serve, as well as to proclaim the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are two pictures here. There's the big picture, the God's redemptive plan for the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then there's a smaller individual picture, each one of us. 
he loves and that he has chosen us in Christ. He has redeemed us. He offers salvation to anybody that comes and opens up their heart of repentance and faith at accepting his free gift. Because that's the ultimate gift of Christmas. Allow me to pray this morning. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us as we go into this Christmas season and allow us to experience and to broaden our perspective of why the Lord Jesus came and all that was accomplished at the cross and what we have to look forward to. We are grateful and thankful people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. I thought as how this day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rung so long the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth. I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on.